Hello everyone, I'm Tom and this is Come Sit at My Table. This week we're doing a series called A Taste for Blueberries and today we're making blueberry pie. Let's get started. For our blueberry pie, we are going to use three cans of blueberries. Now this is not blueberry pie filling. This is literally canned blueberries. They're just blueberries in either blueberry juice or syrup, and you can use either one. I have the ones that are in blueberry juice. I've already drained two of my cans and saved that juice because it can be used for other things. But one can, we're going to use the juice in it. So you need three cans. One can, you need to use the juice in this recipe. So you couldn't really use frozen blueberries for the whole thing because you wouldn't have the juice. Okay, I'm glad you asked me that. that. These also come just packed in light syrup. They're not, they're not blueberry juice. It's just in light syrup. It's sugar water. And you can do this exact same recipe using those blueberries in light syrup. It works the same with either blueberry juice or in light syrup. Okay, what if you can't find the canned blueberries? You can use frozen blueberries and just make your own syrup. You would use equal parts of water and sugar. And I'm gonna say you would need a total of about, I'm, I'm gonna say a cup and a half, two cups of that. But you can do that. You just, it's just so much easier if you can find the canned blueberries. Gotcha, sorry, <laughs> didn't mean to complicate things. That's okay. All right, we're also going to use 10 tablespoons of sugar, but you want it divided. We're gonna use five tablespoons first, and then later in the recipe, we're going to add five more tablespoons. So 10 total, but you're going to use five and then five more. You're also going to need three tablespoons of cornstarch and one tablespoon of lemon juice. Finally, we're going to use one tablespoon of butter. And you can see I've just cut one tablespoon off the end here and then I just cubed it up into, I don't know how many I have there, 15, 16, 18 pieces that we're just gonna lay on top of our pie before we put our top crust on. And that butter will just kind of melt as the pie bakes and soak down into those blueberries. So one tablespoon of butter is all you need. And of course the pie shells. Then pie crust. you need pie crust. Now if you wanna make your own homemade pie crust, that would be fabulous. And I know every time I do a pie, I say, now I'm gonna do a homemade pie crust and show you how to make a pie crust. And I never do because I'm always in a hurry. Today I'm using a different pie crust than I have ever used. If you've been around a while, you know that I always use Pillsbury pie crust. But I had a couple of our subscribers who said to me on one of our pie recipes that they use great value because the great value pie crust is a little bit thicker and it's bigger, so you don't have to roll it out as much. I thought, okay, I'll give it a try. There's not much I use in a generic or store brand over a name brand, but hey, there are some things that are just better. And it sounds like, if they're correct, it sounds like this will be better than the Pillsbury pie crust. Okay, we're gonna come back to the pie crust after we get our blueberry filling and our blueberries in. So let's start by combining five tablespoons of our sugar and our three tablespoons of cornstarch into our saucepan. And we're just going to put that right in and stir that together, whisk that together a little bit. You just wanna make sure that's combined. That will help your cornstarch not to kind of clump up. If you can just mix that cornstarch in with that sugar, it just seems to help the cornstarch behave a little better in the recipe. So you just wanna whisk that together first and get it kind of mixed up. Now, the next thing we're going to do is open one can of blueberries and put just the juice or the syrup in. So I just use a slotted spoon. Let's see, I'm gonna reach behind you and throw that in the sink. I just take a slotted spoon and put right over my blueberries 
and pour that juice right in there. And this is 100% blueberry juice that these are packed in. And you just, you don't have to force the juice out of them or anything, just kind of drain them a little bit. Now, we're going to turn on our fire. And I'm gonna put it on about medium. And we will just whisk in to that juice our sugar and cornstarch. You just wanna get all that mixed in. Now look, I got a few blueberries in there. Look at that. What should I do? Nothing. They'll be fine. They'll just cook right in there as this thickens. I mean, if you wanna fish them out, you can. But it's not gonna hurt that I let a few blueberries slip in there. Looks like I have three of them. The most important thing is just to make sure that your sugar and cornstarch have gotten dissolved in that blueberry juice or the light syrup, whichever one you're using. I'm gonna turn my fire up just a little bit, up to medium high, and we're going to let this cook until it thickens. All right, you can see that our blueberry juice has thickened, and I'm just going to turn that heat completely off. I'm going to make sure I scrape everything down. Get Actually, Melissa, I'm gonna move this off that, because I, I know that even though the fire's off, I know that's still hot. All right, now we're going to stir in our lemon juice and the other half of our sugar. I just wanna get those stirred in good before I put my blueberries in. And let me tell you, once it starts to thicken on the fire, it thickens up really fast. So you have to stay with it. You're going to whisk or stir it constantly. I did switch from a whisk to a spoon. So you just need to make sure you stay with it and watch it because when it starts to thicken, it happens fast. Sounds really nice too. Now we're going to put in our blueberries and I'm just going to dump those in. By the way, we haven't done our trivia question. Yesterday's question was, let me look to make sure. Which fruit besides blueberries, and there are three answers here, are the only other commercially produced fruit crops native to North America? Which other three fruit crops, and they are all berries, are native to North America that are commercially produced. Well, Melissa, do you want to tell the answer? Well, I don't know the answer, but I'm, I guessed yesterday that um, raspberry might be one of them. Raspberries is one of them. Cranberries is another. Ooh, that sounds... And the third is blackberries. Okay. All right. So what's today's question? Well, that's an easy one, I think. Today's trivia question is, which month of the year is National Blueberry Month? It's a pretty simple one. <laughs> which month is National Blueberry Month? We'll tell you the answer tomorrow. All right, there's our blueberry pie filling. And we're just going to let it sit here it will be fine while we get our crust into our pie plate. So, now you notice we've not used the butter yet. So I'm gonna get my flour out here. And I'm just going to put a little bit of flour down on my pastry mat. And we're going to take one of these pie crusts and just open it up. Ooh, that really is a nice crust. Good, good we'll, cooks for viewers. Yeah, I'm gonna put just a sprinkle, little tiny sprinkle of flour on it. Now I know from my pie plate that I need this crust to be about 11, 11 and a half inches. <laughs> 
And now that I have it on here, it's almost there. This is a larger crust than the Pillsbury crust. So I'm not going to have to roll it out much. I'm telling you, that's about it. Wow. Nice crust. Maybe just a hair more right here. Okay. I'm not sure who those viewers are that gave us that tip, but I we wish I could. It. Oh, I wish I could remember, but I cannot because I'd like to give them credit for it. So I'm just going to fold my crust in half, pick it up, put it right in my pie plate. I'm going to open it up here. And we do not want to force it down in there. If you do, it'll shrink during the cooking. So we're just going to pick it up and let it just naturally fall right down into the corner and over the bottom of that pie plate. You do not want to stretch it. If you stretch it, it's going to make it shrink. So, I, mean, I used to hear that you're supposed to like poke it with fork too. I think we talked about this before, but I do have, remember that. You're right, and I'm glad you said it because we may have some new people on here that haven't heard me talk about it. There are people who it's called docking, and you take a fork and just poke all over the bottom. I'm not going to say that's a bad thing to do because I know it works for a lot of people. I do not like doing that. Because I feel like when you put holes in the bottom, you're giving the juice or you know whatever filling is in there a place to soak down in and get under your pie crust and just make it soggy. So I, I don't do that. And I know now if, if you're doing a blind baking of a pie crust, oh, I believe I just got flour on me. If you're doing a blind baking, you're fixing it this way and then putting it in the oven and baking it before you fill it for something like a coconut cream pie. A lot of people do that to keep the bottom from bubbling up, raising up and making bubbles. I don't do that either. I just put a piece of parchment paper in my pie crust and fill it with dried beans, pinto beans or something, and that holds the bottom down. You don't have to worry about it bubbling up if you've got something in there. Okay. So our crust is in the pie plate. Now it does hang over just a little bit and that's okay. I'm not going to trim that off because we're gonna put a top crust on this and we're just gonna fold it all under and crimp it. All right, so this is warm. It's not so hot I can't handle it. So we're just going to put our blueberry pie filling right in there. And that looks lovely. Oh, nice well, thank color. you, babe. Pretty color. I love blueberry pie. Should I make a confession about pie? Yeah, I probably should. I don't know why this is confession time, but you know, I love desserts. That's no secret. All you have to do is look at me and you can tell I love sugar. And I absolutely love cake. I love any dessert. I'm looking for a spatula here because I want every bit of that out of there. I love any dessert, but if I had to pick a favorite, I think I would take pie over all of them. I don't know why, I don't know what it is, but I just absolutely love pie. All right, I'm gonna get rid of that spoon. And I wanna get every bit of this out of there that I can get out. Because that is blueberry goodness right there. Now, what kind of pie is my favorite? That's kind of like asking me to tell you who my favorite child is. That's not possible. I don't think. I, I couldn't pick a favorite child. I don't think I could pick a favorite pie. But blueberry <laughs> would have to be right up there. Man, I do love blueberry pie. Okay, now we need to dot the top of this with our butter. So we're just going to 
take those pieces of butter that I cut apart and we're just gonna drop those all over the pie. Let's see if I can just get these in my hand without making a mess out of them. There we go. Okay, so you just want to put them all over it so they all get some butter as it bakes. You want that butter to melt and just get all over that pie. So just spread them out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Nobody's gonna come check you. There is no blueberry pie police. All right, Melissa, I'm going to rinse my hands, wash my hands off, and then we'll come back and do the top crust. I'll be right back. Now, we need to top our pie with our second crust. You have a lot of options here. If you want, you can take a small cookie cutter, like a star shape, and cut out little shapes all over it before you put it on. You can do a design with a knife, or if you're like me, you can just put it on the way it is, and once you get it on, just take a knife and cut a few slits in it to allow the steam to escape. But you do have to do something to let the steam come out of there. And I'm gonna tell you, this crust is so nice and big that I didn't even have to roll it. Look at that. Fits right over our pie. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna take this top crust and I'm going to fold it right under that bottom crust. I don't know if you can see that, Melissa. See the bottom crust? I'm gonna take the top crust and fold it right under it. Now, why are we doing that? Well, a couple of reasons. Number one, it should help the pie not to leak around the edges. If you can get that top crust under that bottom crust and seal it really well, you shouldn't have any leakage, or we hope we don't have any leakage. Has it happened to me before? Oh yeah, but usually it was my fault because I just didn't get it sealed well enough. So, we're going to go all the way around and just fold the top crust under the bottom. Now, while we're doing this, let me tell you that a lot of people put, I'm sorry, I'm just, I'm forgetting about the camera. Um, a lot of people put cinnamon and nutmeg in their blueberry pie, and I have tried that too. And I, I think it's fine. I think it's fairly good, but... For me, I just like the taste of the blueberries. So I do not add cinnamon and nutmeg to mine. If you want to add cinnamon, cinnamon and nutmeg, you certainly can. But you don't have to do that. If you want to do it, then what you need to add is about one-fourth of a teaspoon of cinnamon and just a pinch of nutmeg, or at the most, an eighth of a teaspoon of nutmeg. You don't want to end up with a cinnamon pie or a nutmeg pie. You want to taste the blueberries, or at least I do. Now, I'm just crimping the edge of my pie. I'm just taking my first finger and my thumb, taking the index finger of my other hand, and pushing in. Now, if you've got a different way that you like to crimp a pie, well then, by all means, you do it your way. But this is just how I crimp the edges of my pies. And it kind of helps to seal those two crusts together, the top crust and that bottom crust. Now, I need to take a knife. I can find a little knife here. And we just need to cut some slits in this so that steam can escape. And that's all I do, just like that. I go across from each other, turn it, do some the other direction. Then I might even just put a little hole between those. And really that's all you need to let that steam escape. It will, it will escape as it bakes. Now, the other thing you can do is to put an egg wash on top of your pie. 
And if you put an egg wash on it, then you can put sugar on that or, you know, sprinkling sugar, whatever you want. In fact, Melissa, you know what? I think I am going to do that. I hadn't planned on doing an egg wash and the, and the sugar, but I think I am because I think it'll just make it really pretty and it'll show another way that you can do it. So let me grab an egg and my sprinkling sugar and we'll do that. I'm just going to put my egg in a bowl and I'll just use a fork to lightly beat that. You just wanna make sure that there are no strings of egg white and you wanna make sure that your yolk is completely mixed into it. Because when you brush this on, you don't want big strings of white or big pieces of egg yolk on top. So just beat that up. All right. And now we're just going to take our brush and we'll just brush that on our pie. You say, oh, I don't know about putting an egg on top of my pie. Well, it's gonna bake. It's going to, it's going to bake and, you know, it's not like you're gonna be eating raw egg. And you just wanna make sure now that if you do this, you come up on the edge of your pie crust. And it doesn't take much. A light sprinkling is all you need. So, and what if you don't have a pastry brush? Well, use your fingers. I've done that many, many times. You don't have to have a brush. Don't be afraid to use your fingers in the kitchen. It's the first tools you ever had. The tools you were born with. So don't be afraid to use them. It's fine. And if somebody says, I can't believe you're using your fingers. Well, they don't know much about cooking. Because that's how a good cook works. Now I'm just going to take my sparkling sugar. I think you called it sprinkling sugar. I right think I there. did. Yep, you're right. And I'm just going to sprinkle that right on top of the pie. Oh, it's going to give it such a nice crust crunch when you're eating it. How much do you put on? Mm, about that much. I can't tell you an amount. Just put on what you want to put on there. It's going to make it delicious. All right. Maybe just a hair more right there. Can you get too much on there? I never have. I don't know. Okay. Now we're going into. What about your pie shell, babe? Yeah, I gotta put my pie shell on. We are going into a 400 degree preheated oven for 30 minutes. I am going to put my pie shield on to keep my edges from burning. I will probably at about 15 minutes check the pie if the edges are fine. I'll take that pie shield off just to make sure that the edges brown up enough. But that's it. A recipe easy enough for a kid to do. Okay, let's go in for 30 minutes and then we should have a beautiful blueberry pie. Our pie cooled completely on the counter. Then we put it in the refrigerator and we have allowed it to sit in the refrigerator for a couple of hours, just because if it gets cold, it does slice better. Now it's time for the most fun part of the video. I can already tell you, I love this pie. <laughs> you want the first bite, babe? I love a bite. Okay. Yum. And I also wanted to mention that this crust performed beautifully. It might be too big of a bite for you. Nah, you did it. <laughs> what do you think about the crust? I really like the crust. And I like that sugar that you sprinkled on top. Mm -hmm. I like that. It's like a little crispiness to it. Yeah, that sparkling sugar is fantastic. Mm -hmm. I like that it gives it just a little bit of a crunch. This is such a good summer pie. Actually, you can get canned blueberries and frozen blueberries year round. 
So we don't have to save this pie until summer. It's good anytime. I hope you'll give this a try. It's really easy to do. You saw what I did. There's nothing to it. So give it a try. I know you are going to love it. Your family will love it. Your friends, whoever you share it with, they're going to really like this pie. Right below this video where you see the title, if you'll click where it says Blueberry Pie, that description box will expand. Melissa always puts the written recipe right there for you. And our contact information is right under that written recipe. We really would appreciate it if you'd click that like button. And if you haven't before, click that subscribe button, a little notification bell by it, and the word all. But you can help us get the word out about our channel if you'll click that share button and share this to your own social media pages. That allows your friends and family to know about our channel. So that would really help us if you would share this. Then remember, there's also a place where you can leave a comment, and we love reading your comments. Melissa spends hours a day just reading those and trying to respond to as many as she can. It's almost become impossible to respond to all of them, but we do try to answer as many as we can. Thank you again for watching our videos. We appreciate you more than you could possibly know. And we want you to remember that you are always welcome to Come sit at my table. Have a great day.